Welcome to the tents here in beautiful Laverne, California. We got a conference matchup for you today between the Laverne Leopards and the Pomona Pitzer Sage Hens. I'm Kevon Churchill and Nate Rodriguez. We got a great day of basketball for you. Let's take a look at the conference standings. Yeah, taking a look at the standings here in the Skyac, Pomona Pitzer atop all teams with 11 and one record, 16 and five overall. Out of the nine teams, the Leopards are placed seventh, a three and nine Skyac record with a five and 14 overall total. Taking a look at the players to watch for today's game, the University of Laverne guard Brian Adams averaging 13.3 points per game on just under 45% shooting. Next leopard to watch, forward Kyler Harvey, fourth in the Skyac in rebounds per game. Look for Harvey to control the boards for the Leopards, averaging over seven and a half per contest. And the last Leo to watch is guard Tavares James. James, a good free throw shooter, above 80%, averaging just under eight points per game. For the reigning Skyac champions, Pomona Pitzer Seichens, guard Brendan Mora is trying to lead the Seichens back to another Skyac title. Second in the conference in rebounds per game and fifth in points per game. Next Sage Hen to watch, guard Joe Cookson, also returning from that championship team. A near 85% free throw shooter, averaging just about 15 points per contest. And our last player to watch today, Sage Hen forward Pete Boyle, an excellent free throw shooter, just under 93%. Look for him to average about 12 points today in this contest. Should be a good matchup tonight. Uh, both teams coming in with a couple of streaks. The Leopards with a bad one, a six-game losing streak, and the Sage Hens come in on a seven-game win streak. The Leopards are five and seven at home this season, and the Sage Hens are actually undefeated on the road, seven and zero. Oh. So this should be a very interesting matchup to watch as we're about to start closing up the warm-ups. And as we mentioned, Pomona Pitzer. I got the chance to watch them here inside the tents last year, Kevon, the defending Skyac champions with a lot of returning players, including those three hens to watch and Mora, Cookson, and Boyle. We'll see how lethal those three can be against a struggling Leopards team. Yeah, if uh, you guys are just tuning in, you missed a great game between the women's Leopards team and the Sage Hens. The Leopards dropped the game, their first conference loss. So men's team looking to avenge the women team in the second half of this matchup. 20 seconds to tip. Saw those Sage Hens kind of upset the Leopards in that first game. I'm hoping for a Leopards upset of the Sage Hens here in game two. Yeah, we were talking about that in between both games. We're like, you know, let's, let's kind of reverse the roles. They, they got one on us, let's get one on them. I like the sound of it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... A 6'5", senior guard, number three, Brendan Mora. A six foot six sophomore, number five, Joe Cookson. A 6'4", junior guard, number 10, Hayden Moser. A 6'7", sophomore, number 21, Ty Bergman. A 6'8", forward, number 44, Pete Boyle. Pomona Pitzer is head coached by Charles Katsifakas. And assistant coach, Sean Loco. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Not again. Everybody on your feet for yeah, your University of the Bird Leopards. Head guard for the Leopards, a six four senior from the Bronx, New York. Number two, Brian Adams. 
A six foot junior from Riverside, California, number three. Moore. A six four junior from Burbank, number five. A 6'9 sophomore, number 25, Brandon Ziegler. You love it and you gotta get a world tour. The Leopards are head coached by Richard Reed, assistant coach Dwayne Bates, assistant coach Lorenzo Griffin, assistant coach John Leggett Jr., and assistant coach Reese Garrett. Let's go, Leopards! I'm not the type of good at a type What an entrance. Indeed, what an entrance indeed. About to tip off in the tent. Should be an exciting matchup. Sachens with a lot of height, huh? Couldn't help but notice. 6'4, 6'7, 6'8. Yeah, I don't know what I would do if I was if I was that tall. That seems kind of crazy to me. Little foreign territory. Leopards win the tip. Adams bringing the ball up. Safir Moore getting the start tonight. He's been a big contributor off the bench. Looks like he's Earned that starting role for the Leopards. Adams with a couple series of moves, goes into the fadeaway jumper. No good, rebounded by number 10, Hayden Moser, for the Sage Hens. We were talking before the game, Adams is best in the paint. We'll see how much he can contribute from the inside. Yeah, definitely gonna have to get a little creative with the size advantage in favor of the Sage Hens. Nice little slip screen. Good help defense by Ziegler, but he's gonna get Called for the foul, sending Ty Bergman to the line, looking to get the first points of the ball game for the Sage Hens. Yeah, Ziegler got the leopard started on the right foot. Laverne's biggest body in the starting five today. Won the tip, but no match there. Ty Bergman going up for the dunk, and Ziegler just getting a hand in. That first free throw good for the Sage Hens. Shoot about 75% from the line on the season, so a very solid free throw shooting team. We talked about that in the women's game. Ziegler couldn't control the rebound, and another foul. I believe that one's gonna go on Harvey, but we talked about that in the women's game, how important free throw shooting is and how you wanna be in that 70% to 75% free throw mark. Yeah, I made a comment that last game that I've seen enough games to know that free throws really make a difference here inside the tents. Bergman, a 76% free throw shooter. Missed one in his last set, missed one here to start, but he'll make the second. Not too sure what happened there, but the score is two to nothing in the early parts of this game. Looking like the Sage Hens coming out in a extended 2-3 zone. Zone is a very hard thing to break for most basketball teams, so we'll see how the Leopards fare off a great entrance pass by Adams to Ziggler, who gets the easy layup. And that's what you want to do on the zone, is get the ball to the high post, because that makes the defense on the bottom come up, and that you got the little slip, easy layup. Ziegler Leopards do that a lot. Ziegler read it perfectly, cut at the right time, great pass by Adams. Up fake by Boyle, swings it cross court, the open three from the corner, good. That is Hayden Moser on the three pointer. So Pitts are getting the shots they want to start the game. Drew a couple fouls inside the paint, able to stretch the Leopards out a little bit with that three pointer. Leopards can do a little three point shooting of their own. Harvey with the long two, won't go. Adams almost tipped that one in. Rebounded by Cookson, who's going to push the action for the Sage Hens. Good help defense by Jonas Holt, brother of Sean Holt. If you guys are baseball fans, good put back there. Brendan Mora getting his own offensive rebound after the shot. Mora really facilitated things for the Sage Hens last year in that championship run. Doing the same here this year. Yeah, really good player. Someone the Leopards are going to have to look out for. A lot like Madison Kwan from the Sage Hens women's team, just running things on all ends of the floor. Yes, Kwan had a very 
good afternoon. A great shot by Harvey coming off the assist from Holt. And that's what you have to do with the, with the zone is move the ball around. You can't really beat it with the dribble. So some good passing to start the game for the Leopards. Harvey, although not one of the Leos to watch in this game, is certainly good from beyond the arc. Yeah, he's a really good player, very lengthy. Good defense being played by the Leopards to tip that ball up. Ziggler controls it, gets it to Adams. Seijin's doing a great job of getting back into that 2-3 zone. That's pretty impressive how quick they got back into that. A great take by Ziggler going straight to the chest and the finish with the right hand. Got a feeling the big man's going to play a big part of the offense today, trying to provide some height against this Pitzer team with a lot, a lot of size. Yeah, his performance is going to be key for the Leopards. It's pretty much going to be all up to him in the paint. A great little lob pass, Boyle with the finish. Good job by Boyle to get up and over the defender. Leopards had no chance to stop it. Leopards swinging the ball across the top, get it to that high post. Holt gets his shot blocked by Boyle. Dishes it up to Cookson. Open three-pointer, won't go off front iron. Almost controlled by Boyle, rolls off his fingertips. Leopard's ball, gonna have an early substitution for Holt. Coach definitely just wants to talk to him, make, talk him through the right decisions to make when you're put in that high post position. Coach Richard Reed following the wide out guidelines today. Yeah, he looks very smooth in that all white. Shot blocked by Mora, put up again by Adams, nice. Yeah, good job not to get discouraged. Kind of readjust yourself and put up a nice mid-range jumper. That's where he likes to work, mid-range and the paint. That corner three, good by Boyle. He's got five in the early going of this game. Score is 11 to 9, 15 40 remaining in this first half. That's going to be a kickball violation. And we have got an early timeout. So far in this scratch, that the score is actually 12 to 9. They, they gave a, a two pointer when it should have been a three. So 12 to 9 in advantage of the Sage Hens. Uh, Nate, what's something you've seen so far in this game that the Leopards have either been doing or, or not doing? Well, coming out of the gates, the Leopards a little anxious on defense. This Sage Hens team, as we mentioned, of a lot of size. Leopards made a couple quick fouls, but have settled back into the game, have played clean defense in the last four minutes or so, trailing only by three. It's going to be up, I still think, to Ziegler and the ball movement for the Leopards in order to try and stay in this game for the Sage Hens, another matchup on paper that shouldn't exactly be close coming, in, coming into this one, but the Leopards trying to play a little bit of spoiler. Yeah, Leopards did that earlier this year, beating 13th ranked Claremont early on in the season. That sparked a three game win streak for the Leopards, but as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, have dropped their last six, so looking to get back on track, and this would be doing it in a big way against the number one team in the Skyak. Harvey going to take the ball out for the Leopards to Adams, who will control things. Little high pick and roll action. Leopards like to do that. Tough pass, tried to squeeze it in. It's going to be a turnover on the Leopards, being brought up by Cookson. Kick to another open three in the corner. That one rims out, rebounded, won't go. And looks like we're going to have a loose ball foul on the Leopards. A lot of physicality there underneath the basket. A good job by the Leopards to try and just stay with the rebound game. The Sage Hens, plenty of height advantages underneath the basket. Laverne called for the foul, but we'd love to see the effort. Yeah, you know, despite the height difference, the rebound advantage isn't as great as you would think on the season. Adams looking to push the action for the Leopards. Harvey wide open right wing. Three won't go. And the Sage Hens looking to push it wide open. Fast break layup is good. And that's going to prompt another early timeout by the Leopards. That layup there made by Cookson. Good court awareness by Hayden Mosier. Coming away with the defensive rebound. Bringing the ball up. Cookson able to just use those wheels and burst through the Leopards defense. 
as I was going to mention, the rebound, rebound discrepancy, only three per game. Uh, Leopards averaging 37.3 rebounds per game, and the Sage Hens coming in averaging 40.6. Leopards on the season are getting out rebounded by about one rebound a game by opponents, so not really a huge issue, but something you definitely want to focus on nonetheless against a team that has a pretty big size advantage over you. Moore's gonna get the offense started for the Leopards. Look at those shoes. Yeah, those are the, the mellows, the mellow ones, I believe. The Grinch colorway, very flashy pair. Harvey getting into that high post. Gonna get it into the paint for Keith Stewart who goes with the little baby hook. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar-esque. Keith Stewart coming off the bench in place of Brandon Ziegler, another big body for the Leopards. Good basket there by the big man. Stewart's been out a little bit of time, actually most of the season with an injury that he sustained early on. So good to see him out on the court. A strong take and the and one for Tavares James who gets the scoring going for himself. His first basket, looking to make it three at the line. Good job by James to be aggressive underneath the basket, picking up the foul on the layup attempt as he goes to the line, taking a look at his numbers, shooting a bit above 80% from the charity stripe. Very good free throw shooter. Knocks that one down, no announcers jinx to worry about there. That's gonna tie up this ball game at 14 apiece with 14-17 remaining in the first half. Substitution for Pitzer. Hayden Moser is going to come off the court and in his place will enter Peyton Malarkey. Leopards running a little trap action on defense. They're going to get something going, get Pitzer out of their rhythm. Mora controlling the ball, kicks it into the corner. Good defense being played by James, able to cut that lane off to the basket. James guarding Owen Abdelovich. He's coming off the bench for Pomona Pitzer. Late shot clock situation. Cool and collected as Joe Cookson getting the little baby hook to go. Moore brings it up for the Leopards who have been handling this 2-3 zone pretty well so far in this game. James looking to attack. Little sidestep mid-range jumper is pure. A great move to create some distance. Opposing team crowd wanted to push off, but he was able to do it discreetly enough that the refs didn't see it. A really smart play. Took the words right out of my mouth. Did a great job creating space there with the handle. Did use a little bit of a push off, but no fall to the Leopards' favor. Good shot, Brendan Mora. Yeah, the nice little backdoor cut by Mora. Easy layup. Good passing so far by both teams, really, to start this game. Pretty even matchup through the first seven minutes of this game. Stewart begging for the ball in the high post. Not going to get it into him, but he wants it. They're finally going to get it to him in the short corner. Double, Double team. team. Got to kick it out. Now he's trapped. Yeah, he had Harvey on the wing, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. Not a good play. You know, Stewart should have gotten the ball earlier, I do agree, but he also should have swung it back to Harvey once he saw the double team coming because the defense would have had to shift and there would have been an open shooter in the corner most likely if, the, if he kind of skipped the passes a little bit. Might have been a little greedy with the ball, but great defense by King and Abdelovich to really lock him up. Yeah, smart double team. Mora going to attack the paint strong. Low pass, corralled then, that three-pointer won't go. James with the rebound. Three on two advantage for the Leopards. Kicks it out to Adams, not really a three-point shooter. That one rolls out. Rebounded by Moore. Adams had a good look there. I like the shot you said, not a great three-point shooter, but when you got an open look like that, you gotta take it. Most definitely, and another slip screen by the Sage Hens. That's been the heavy dose of their offense so far, sending those high pick and rolls, being able to slip off the Leopard, sending two men each time on that pick and roll. 20 to 16 is the score with just under 12 remaining in this first half. 
Leopard's trying to get into their offensive set. Another late shot clock situation. Tries to kick it into Stewart in the low post. Goes through his legs and another turnover by the Leopards. Yeah, Stewart just didn't quite look fully aware and ready for the pass. By the time he saw it, ball was through his legs. John King gets the ball stripped away by Adams, who's trying to corral it. Leopards don't have the advantage, but a strong take by Adams won't go. Wanted the foul, won't get it. Yeah, a couple questionable no calls there. Stewart definitely wrapped around King here on this side of the court. Adams looked like he drew some contact on the way up. Won't matter, though. That three-pointer good by Peyton Mullerkey. Mullerkey's first Mullerkey. points of the night. I think it's all the same. It's like tomato, tomato. Tomato, but. tomato. <laughs> Forgive us, though, whether it's Mullerkey or Mullerkey. James misses that turnaround mid-range jumper short off the front iron. Mullerkey. Oh, looked like he might have Switch pivot feet there, no call by the refs. Moore at the top of the key, looking to get something going. Mismatch against Stewart. Yeah, had the speed advantage. Used it to his advantage, able to get to the line 4-2, but not before we take a timeout. We're watching the Skyac men's basketball on LVTV3 Laverne Community Television. Good action so far in this first half. Five point game. We're gonna get a replay of that last foul shortly. Yeah, Seichen's leading by seven, doing a good job of controlling the inside. More of there going up against Stewart. Stewart trying to make up for that lack of speed, like you said, against the Seichen's guard, just getting that right hand on the left arm of Brendan Mora. Yeah, pretty solid defense uh, around the perimeter, but as you, as you mentioned, the, the speed just a little too much. Had the foul to prevent the layup. Good strong take by Mora, who's looking for his fifth and sixth points of the game at the line. So far, Pomona Pitzer, two for four from the free throw line. Laverne has only had one shot at the charity stripe. This will be Mora's first trip. On the season, shooting just above 70% from the free throw line. We'll see if he can build on their seven point lead. Crowd getting a little noisy, trying to get into the head of the free throw shooter. Won't work. Mora drops his first one in. Mora from Palo Alto, California, up north. Got a substitution for the shooter, so if he hits it, it'll be coming out. Second free throw rattles in and out, corralled by James, who's gonna push the action. Loses it off his foot. Yeah, another turnover, we'll see if it proves costly. Good defense being played by Adams to go straight up. But the put back by Ty Bergman, his fourth point of the ball game. Oda Pitzer doing a good job rebounding so far today, has out-rebounded the Leopards 12 to five. Five of those rebounds coming on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, Sage Hands expanding this lead in the second half of the first half. 26 to 16 is the score. Harvey corner three pointer won't go. Rebounded by Malarkey. Laverne now one for four from beyond the arc. Harvey one for two. Adams 0 for one. Cookson gets it into Bergman, who has a nice little drop pass on the cut. That is. Cookson off the assist from Bergman. 12 point advantage for the Sage Hens. Tyler Matthews in off the bench getting some looks. The freshman, a very good player, very aggressive offensively and defensively. Good swing to Nutson in the corner. That three pointer goes. Great ball movement by the Leper. It's a good job by Matthews to get the extra pass off to Nutson. Nutson, a great three point shooter. Saw him shooting the three point contest in the Moonlight Madness event the Leopards held at the beginning of the year. See him drain that corner three there. Brings it down to a single digit game. Yeah, something funny that happened in the pregame as a nice little drop off pass. Bergman once again getting the layup, looking for the and one. 
And nuts in uh, pregame, he was shooting around in the corner. Saw me, he was like, Kev, this one's for you. I'm like, all right, let's see it. He goes to the corner, shoots it, turns around, not even looking, gives me a high five, makes it. So that shows Steph you what Curry. type of shooter he is. A lot of confidence out of Casey Nutson. Got a replay on the corner three by Nutson. Great passing, as you mentioned, and a pure shot. The and one opportunity, no good. Corralled in by Ziglu, who gets it to Brad. Great backup point guard for the Leopards. Brings a lot of energy, both offensively and defensively. Harvey looking to get it into Ziggler. A nice pass, and the reach-in foul is called. 30 to 19, the score, Leopards down by 11 with 8.20 remaining in this first half. On the floor for Laverne, Yasukochi, Harvey, Matthews, Nutson and Ziegler. Nutson, wing three, won't go, short off of the front iron. Good shot, just doesn't get it to fall. Malarkey, corner three pointer. Good contest by Harvey, it won't go. And a good rebound by Matthews, who's going to look to push the action for the Leopards and a reach in foul on Malarkey. Good call by the officials. Definitely got a little bit of the body. For Malarkey, that's his first foul. And yeah, you could see Matthews definitely got hit, took a step back after the contact. Brings both teams to their benches just under eight minutes to play. Yeah, we got a, a media timeout. Leading the way for the Sage Hens, Cookson and Bergman both with six points apiece. Mora and Boyle both with five. Tavares James, the Leopards leading point scorer with five. Ziegler behind him with four, while Harvey and Nutson each have three. You know, Leopards not doing a terrible job so far this game. You see the double digit advantage in, in uh, favor of the Sage Hens, but you know, there was just a, a couple minutes stretch where the Leopards just got out of their detail. But other than that, I've been playing pretty competitively. So excited to see what happens in the closure of this first half and going into the second half. Seichen's doing a great job shooting the ball above 57% from the field. Leopards flirting with that 50% mark, 8 of 17. Leopards bench is pretty good on the season come on a lot of times and are able to close disadvantages or expand leads. Little step back, good defense being played by Moser. Ziegler wanted it in that low post, not gonna throw a good decision by Brad. The little turnaround jumper by Matthews rattles in. Great little turnaround shot. We saw Yara Brown do that just earlier in the women's game. Was just about to mention that, called it LeBron James-esque, great shot. Right there, though, by the Sage Hens, Mosier. Yeah, that corner three looks to be a favorite of the Sage Hens, seeing about three or four of those go down so far in this game. Nice little cross-court pass. Leopard's looking to break this 2-3 zone. Dangerous pass, risky. Just a little too low, Harvey couldn't corral it, and another turnover on the Leopards. Safir Moore will come in for Casey Nutson. You saw Kyler Harvey perhaps get a little bit upset with the pass from Nutson. You mentioned risky pass. Nutmeg Harvey a little bit. Leopards got to play a little bit cleaner trying to cut into this deficit. Yeah, when you go down big this early in the game, you got to take care of the ball every possession. Nice pump fake little relocate jump shot. Won't go. Moore bringing it up for the Leopards. Brad, who's going to pull up for the mid-range jumper, won't go off front iron. Sage Hens looking to push it, three on two, fast break. Good job of the Leopards to get back and kind of cut it off. Going to make the Sage Hens go into their offensive set. Moving the ball around nicely. 14 remaining on the shot clock. Good defense being played by the Leopard. Hands in the face and forces a contested long two. That one going in off the glass by Ty Bergman, who's got eight on the evening so far. Bergman doing a good job of using his height advantage against any opponent that really plays against them. Again, the Seichens really just big bodied. Oh, what a move by Matthews as he drops it in. Little jab step to the left, drive to the middle,
spin move, fall away. That's a tough shot for anyone watching at home. Another open corner three. That one put in by Hayden Moser. Yeah, Moser going from corner to corner, feeling it from beyond the arc. Same way Tyler Matthews feeling that turnaround jumper off the right pivot. Sage Hens expanding the lead a little bit in this closure to the first half. A nice little turnaround, little baby hooked by Ziegler. 38 to 25 advantage Sage Hens with just under five and a half remaining in the first. Ziegler now with six. Got to watch out for that corner three. Another one for the Sage Hens. Leopard's lucky that one doesn't go. A little miscommunication. Harvey takes advantage with the rebound. That was the Sage Matthews Hens. wants it. He's feeling it. Three-pointer good by Matthews coming off the bench. And seven points in just a couple minutes of floor time in this game, trying to keep the Leopards in it. Yeah, his last three shots have fallen, certainly feeling pretty good. Leopards got to keep the ball in his hands. Leopards playing some good defense. Another long two, won't go. Offensive rebounded by the Sage Hens. Good tip by Pete Boyle. Good defense. Able to get the steal, kind of knew the pass was gonna come, maybe read the defender's hands, timeout. Called and we're gonna take a little bit of a break. The score is 38 to 28, Sage Hens with 429 remaining in this first half. Uh, what have you seen so far that the Leopards have done to kind of cut into this lead a little bit these past couple minutes? Well, they're really moving the ball a little bit better. Tyler Matthews has certainly come onto the floor and provided a spark of energy for these Leopards. The Seychens haven't played as clean with the basketball as we take a look at this last play. Great defense as we talked about before the game. Brad Yasakochi providing a lot of energy coming off the bench has been a big contributor to the defense. Noticed that last year watching these men play. But yeah, Laverne really just utilizing Matthews off the bench, getting the ball moving around the floor. Seichen still doing a good job though, moving without the basketball, making things happen, holding the 10 point lead. Yeah, I wanna go back to that play with Brad. That's something that uh, a lot of defensive football coaches teach is looking into the eyes of the person that you're guarding because their eyes are gonna widen as the ball comes close. So he wasn't even looking, but he knew to put his arm up and that was enough to be able to knock it free and good effort and good timeout call by the coaching staff of the Leopards. Good insight provided there, Kavon. Former basketball player yourself. Indeed, a little bit, a little bit. I did a little something, something on the court. Harvey gonna take it out from under for the Leopards. Moore's gonna bring the ball up. Moore scoreless early in this game. Definitely will change. Pretty good shooter, good at attacking the basket. Going to get the ball into Matthews' hands. Dishes it off to Adams. The nice mid-range jumper. Looking for the contact. Won't get it. Adams had a good look coming back in off the bench. I still like the shot decision there. Yeah, especially for a mid-range shooter like him. That's a wild shot. Ziggler with the rebound. Good. Matthews looking to push. Good defense by Adams on the state chance last shot. Yes, yeah, very good contest going straight up, making that a tough shot. Adams controlling it for the Leopards. Gets it into the low post. The turnaround won't go off front iron. Rebounded by Moser. Who will bring it up for the Sage Hens. Looking to get back on track offensively. The Leopards have made it difficult to score these past couple minutes. Brendan Mora waiting in the wings, looking to substitute in. Definitely a big part of their offense that gets them going. Good defense on the baseline by Matthews. A nice little up and under, but they're going to Get the foul call. Most likely going to the line for two. Joe Cook's in there doing it all himself, taking Matthews on one on one, getting his own offensive rebound underneath Ziegler, then putting it back up and drawing the contact from the big man. Take a look at the replay here. Or maybe not. That's all right, though. That first free throw will rattle in. I think I described it okay. Beat Matthews in the one-on-one, -on -one, got his own got his own board, put it back up. Now he's one for one at the line here on this trip. I think you painted the picture perfectly. Thanks, Kalon. 
Second free throw. Rims in. Too good. By Cook. Cookson. Now with seven. Kickball violation will remain Leopard's ball. 40 to 28 advantage for the Sage Hens with just a little under three and a half remaining in this first. Leopards definitely want to try to cut this to a single digit lead before the half. Jonas Holt coming back in for Brandon Ziegler. Nice little jab step, corner three from Moore is good. And I mentioned he can, he can shoot that thing, especially from the corner. It's his first basket of the game. Three on the board for him. And now it's a nine point advantage for the Sage Hens. Leopard's looking to keep this going. Just under three minutes left in this first half. Good defense by the Leopards. A great recovery by Holt and the help by Harvey. Leopards, great take by Adams with the little up and over, skip to Malou and the layup. Love the language, Kevon. Great play by Adams. The block on the other end by Harvey got it going. And you mentioned Adams makes the biggest impact makes the biggest impact inside the paint. Did it there. Mora got away with a little bit of a hook on the arm of Matthews, I believe, but the layup good nonetheless. Nine point advantage for the Sage Hens. Holt still looking to get himself going, swings the ball around. Moore, another corner three. That one hits off the backboard, and the front iron won't go. Cooks him. not working. Misses the layup, and it'll be Leopard's ball. We got a replay. And a substitution for the Leopards. Adams coming off. Moore bringing the ball up the floor for the Leopards. Gabriel McCrary into the game. Yeah, he's also been out with injury for most of the season. Nice to see him out on the floor. Harvey, a nice up fake. Good, strong take the up and under with the left with a little English on it to get it to go. Great athleticism by Harvey. Beat three Sage Hens defenders there on that play. Leopard now only down by seven. Great defense being played by Gabe McCrary. Great job by McCrary to come in off the bench and make an immediate impact. As you mentioned, missed some time with injury. Comes on and plays defense against Cookson. Cookson getting a little bit frustrated with McCrary's D and using a little bit too much shoulder. Sage Hens still in that 2-3 zone that they've been in all evening. Leopard's doing a little better job of breaking it. Harvey open from the top of the key. Good for three. Four point game. Yep, cutting into that lead. Great job by the Leopards to close off this half on a strong run. Mora for the Sage Hen, swings it into the corner. Once again, good defense being played by McCreary, but a foul called. Looked like he went straight up, but what do I know? I'm up here. It's going to be two free throws for Cookson, who's got eight on the night, looking to make it 10. Cookson from the line, two for two so far, gets two shots here. And the first of two hits the bottom of the net. Cookson coming into this contest shooting just under 85%, certainly building on that now. A total 76 for 89 on the year from the strike. And the second of two rolls off the front iron and in. Lead back up to six for the Sage Hens with just under a minute remaining in this first half. Leopards, furious comeback, one point down, 15, cutting it to six. Holt thought about it, won't shoot it. Swings it to Moore, who's going to take it. That three-pointer won't go. Great rebound by Harvey, drops it to Holt. Good play by Harvey to keep the play alive. Yeah, smart not to, you know, just let it out of his hands immediately. Kind of looked to make sure that Holt was looking and gave it to him. 
See a lot of players that aren't as experienced just kind of save it into the into the netherworld of the court. But a great job of looking around for his teammates. McCrary bringing the ball out of bounds for the Leopards, having time getting it in. Holt, corner three. Hits nothing, but McCrary with the rebound. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, just about 10 seconds separating shot and game clock. Sage Hens will most likely get the last shot. Nice mid-range jumper by Harvey, won't go. Rebounded, being pushed by Mora. Six remaining, five. Oh, and a foul call, baited him with the pump fake, waited for him to come down. A nice move by number 21, Ty Bergman, who's got eight points on the night. Well, I'll tell you what, Bergman and Boyle both playing at the forward position for the Sage and certainly know their height advantages over the Leopards that are down under. A good job there by Bergman to read the play. Yeah, Leopards will have a little time to push the ball up the court. They could probably, they'll definitely be able to get a half court shot up. A couple dribbles and the shot. Both free throws good, getting that lead back to eight for the Sage Hens. Smart move to let it roll. And Holt from half court just misses. That would have been something. That would have been something. A close shot at the end of the first half. The score is 46 to 38, advantage Sage Hens. And uh, what's something that you saw in that first half that the Leopards did or didn't do? Well, you know, they really did a good job of closing in on the Sage Hens gap. Came with a timeout. I want to say a little more than halfway through this first quarter, head coach Richard Reed doing a good job of using substitutions and the bench players coming off the bench ready to play. You saw Matthews, Matthews come in, make an impact, sink his first few shots. McCrary come in off the bench, play good defense, force a turnover, him sink a shot of his zone. The Leopards, who looked a little bit bleak to start the game against these powerhouse Sagehens, able to do a good job of just staying right there on their tail. Yeah, the Leopards bench contributing 14 on the night so far. We're watching Sky Act men's basketball on LVTV3, Laverne Community Television, and we'll be back with more action after the break. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. One in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. And welcome back to the tents in Laverne, California. A good matchup so far. 46 to 38 the score. I'm Kevon Churchill. I'm here with Nate Rodriguez, who's going to break down the halftime stats for us. Yeah, as Kevon mentioned, Sage Hens leading the Leopards by 8, 46 to 38. Both teams flirting with that 50% shooting mark. Pomona Pitzer doing a little bit better than the Leopards, and certainly doing better from beyond the arc, shooting over 45% from beyond in three-point range. Free throws haven't come in abundance for the Leopards. Meanwhile, the Sage Hens have certainly been drawing shooting fouls, having taken 13 total free throws compared to the Leopards' sole one. And we're just about ready to get started in the second half. It'll be Sage Hens ball coming out of the break, as you mentioned, 46 to 38 the score with 20 more minutes of Leopards basketball coming your way. Coming out of the half, Ty Bergman and Joe Cookson leading the Sage Hens both with 10 points. Hayden Mosier with nine, all three of his baskets made from beyond the arc. Brendan Mora, the ball handler, hasn't done much 
just two points. It's going to be a, another early foul call for the Leopards. Had a couple to start the game in that first half and another quick one to start the second half. Yeah, good job by Ty Bergman, able to draw contact there, going up underneath the basket, taking a trip to the line. Bergman's got 10 points through the first half. It's that free throw. Struggled a little bit at the line earlier in the game. He's four for seven on the day. Make it five for eight after the first one, six for nine after the second. Moore bringing the ball up for the Leopards, down 10. Did a good job of cutting into that 15 point lead in the first half. Looking to come all the way back in the second. Tyler Matthews made an impact off the bench in the first half, he's on the floor. And another nice layup by Ziegler, who's been doing a pretty solid job in the paint. He's got eight. Mentioned earlier that Ziegler was gonna play a crucial role if the Leopards wanted to stay in this game. The big bodies for the Leopards, Ziegler and Student will be called upon in the second half. Moore, a nice little change of speed on that layup, let the defender fly by him and gets it to go. Moore is just a special talent, a lot like Madison Kwan from the women's team we said earlier, can just do it on all ends of the floor. High pick and roll action for the Leopards, gonna swing it to Harvey into the corner to Matthews and a pretty clear reach in foul on Mora. Leopards will be taking it under the basket. Moore's gonna do the honors. As you mentioned, Matthews with a really solid first half. Seven coming off the bench and coming into the second half starting. Ziegler won't get it to go. Rolls out, rebounded by Mora. He's going to push the action to Cookson. Swings it out to the top of the key. Good defense being played by the Leopards to slow that down. Getting the advantage and a nice take downhill for Cookson. Able to get Mora on his back hip finish with the left. Real good job by Cooks in to split two defenders going up with the opposite hand, sunk the layup with the left. Some more high pick and roll action for the Leopards, not really looking for the slip. However, Ziegler might have had him and an errant pass is gonna go to the Sage Hens. Coach Richard Reed not happy about that pass decision by Tyler Matthews. Yeah, I mean, he tried to get the pass from the opposite wing to the opposite block, and that's just a really tough pass to make. Open three-pointer, won't go off front iron, rebounded. That was Moser with the shot, trying to carry some of that first half success into the latter 20 minutes. Sage Hens. Nice little slip, great recovery by Harvey. Sends it careening off the glass. Adams, the one on three fast break. That's gonna get blocked by Bergman. And that block by Harvey, worth mentioning. He's got a couple inches shorter than Pete Boyle who went up for the layup. Harvey at 6'4", going up and getting the big block. Yeah, did a great job of recovering. Adams, nice entry pass to Ziegler who kind of hesitated a little bit, had the open layup if he just went straight up, but a couple of up fakes. Bergman with the block. And that time tried to go for the slip screen. Won't do it, and another early turnover by the Leopards. Leaves Coach Richard Reed just scratching his head. A couple of bad passes here to open up the second half for the Leopards. Not what you need when you had the deficit into single digits, now letting it to 12. And another nice cut by the Sage Hens. Layup good by Bergman. He has got 14 on the evening. That's good for the Sage Hens lead. Yeah, Leopard's just struggling to prevent those cutters. Matthews gets the ball from Adams, dishes it to Harvey in the high post, cross court pass to Moore. Leopard's doing a good job of moving it around, but got to get going with under 10 on the shot clock. Five remaining on the shot clock. Oh, a nice little turnaround jumper by Adams. Just kisses the bottom of the net, cuts that lead to 12. That was beautiful 
body control by Brian Adams, able to provide the hesitation. Nice little spin move. Got some good air under the shot. Beautiful play. Beautiful play indeed. Leopard's looking to get a stop on this possession against the Sage Hens. Kind of got hung up on that pass. That three-pointer rattles in and out for Mora. Rebounded, Matthew's gonna push it up for the Leopards. Mora having an uncharacteristic day from the field, just three for 10 to start, only seven points. Yeah, but despite his performance, Pitts are still doing a great job, and that's gonna be a travel on Adams and another early turnover for the Leopards in the first few minutes of the second half, and we're gonna take a media timeout. The score, 54 to 42, advantage Sage Hens. And what have you seen so far in these first few minutes that the Leopards need to fix? Well, the Leopards not really controlling the controllables in the first four minutes. A couple of turnovers on bad passes, that travel violation there by Adams. The deficit was down to single digits, as we mentioned, coming out of the half, an eight-point game, but now it's a 12-point Sage Hens lead. Pomona Pitzer still doing a good job moving without the basketball. I think the Leopards could do a little bit better at doing just that. Most definitely, most definitely. Turnovers hurting the Leopards early, and it also hurt them early in that first half. So you're kind of seeing coming out of these breaks, they're just struggling to get their feet going and uh, cut it to as low as five, and now it's swelled back up to 12. Well, the Leopards did well coming out of timeouts in the first half. We'll see if that remedy can repeat itself here in the second. Let's see, it's going to be Sage Hens taking it out from under. Leopards going into a press, trying to force the action defensively. You see Moser, Boyle, Cookson, Mora, and Bergman on the floor for the Sage Hens in blue. Mora at the top, swings it over to Cookson. At the top of the key, some good ball movement by the Sage Hens and a strong take by Mora. Good hands by Matthews. And that should be Leopard's ball, yeah. That was off of Mora. Matthews, very smart decision to let it go. Good job by the freshman Tyler Matthews to get a hand in on the pass. And then, like you said, the smart decision to let the ball roll out of bounds. Last touch from Mona Pitzer. Adams looking to get something going. Swings it to the hot hand, Matthews. Hasn't got a shot up so far in the second half, but you know we will. A little miscommunication. And another turnover by the Leopards. Got to limit the mistakes as we move further into the second, court, second half. Most definitely, just looking a little lackadaisical with the ball. Bergman with the ball up top, swings it to Cookson. Good little show and go defense being played by Stewart. Moore looking to set up Adams. A nice cross court pass. The corner three won't go, however, and a nice rebound by Harvey. Skied high to get above everyone else. Yeah, got in between Boyle and Mora there. Harvey, like the meat in the middle of the sandwich, just able to go up and get it. What a move by Stewart getting the defender on his back hip, draws contact, and will get two at the line. Yeah, good job by Stewart coming off the bench, providing a big body presence for the Leopards, coming in as a replacement for Brandon Ziegler, who's done his own part so far in this game. Now Stewart looking to add on to his two points. Stewart at the line, looking to cut into that Sage Hens lead. First free throw good. Substitution for the Sage Hens. John King comes into the game. Looking at Stewart's number on the season. Almost shooting 86% from the free throw line. Two for two here. He hits both there, as you mentioned, and he's a very good free throw shooter for a big man. Don't always see that, but in practices, he's always knocking down the free throws, something that he works on a lot. Sophia Moore being substituted for Jonas Holt. Holt's still looking to get going. He's got no points on the night, but you know that could change quickly. Mora using his strength to kind of push off Matthews and an easy layup for Cookson, who's got 14 on the evening. 
Yeah, Mora just abusing the young in there a little bit, using the shoulder to create some space. That's going to be a reach-in foul on King. Matthews will take it out under the basket. Nudson coming in. The score is 56 to 44 in advantage of the Sage Hens with 14 12 remaining in this second half. Holt open three pointer. Won't go. Looked off out of the hand and rebounded by Cookson. He's going to smartly pull it out and slow it down a little bit for the Sage Hens. Good help defense being played by the Leopards. Mora, nice drop pass to King, who finishes through a little contact, no call. And that lead ballooning back up to 14 for the Sage Hens. Yeah, good job by the facilitator, Mora. Although he's not having his most productive night scoring, at least, still doing a great job creating plays, driving to the basket, and like you mentioned there, dropping one off to King for the assist. Well, that's what good players do, is even if they're having an off-shooting night, they'll contribute everywhere else on the floor. Matthews with the ball in the corner. Shot clock running down. A nice entry pass to Harvey who finishes the tough layup with two defenders on him. Might have even got a got away with a non-call there. Looked like the Sage Hands might have got a little bit of Kyler Harvey's right hand, but no distraction to the forward. Moore runs into his own man. A nice spin move and a foul called on Harvey. So Moore will go to the line. Looking to add on to his seven points. Mora using a lot of his physicality here in this second half on the last couple of sequences, bodying up against Tyler Matthews and Kyler Harvey, able to bring himself to the line, his team up 12. I mean, look at the, look at the biceps on that dude. That is a strong individual. Knocks down the first one. Mora, as we mentioned, was the key player on the Seychens championship run last year in which they won the 2022 Skyac tournament, made an NCAA tournament appearance before losing in the second round. Both free throws good by Mora. Score is 60 to 46 with just under 13 remaining in the second half. Lebers looking to get something going. Nutson with the mid-range jumper is pure, kisses the bottom of the net. Cutting into that deficit. Good job by Nutson coming off the bench, ready to shoot, doing what he does best. This whole Leopards bench so far, we mentioned 14 first half points off the bench. They've come off ready to play. Moore looks like he's being a little more aggressive with the ball in the second half. Got away with a little shuffling of the feet and that's gonna be a reach in foul by Nutson. So that's going to be the third Lepers foul, I do believe. Lepers were doing a good job playing clean defense in the first couple minutes. Now picking up a couple fouls in about just as many minutes. Uh, and the Leopards were not ready for that one. More off the little lob pass on the out of bounds play. Easy layup gets it to go. Nutson in the corner. Swings it back up to Matthews. He's going to swing it to hold. A nice pump fake. Corner three by Nutson could have had it. Good option to drive baseline and kick it to the wide open. Matthews, who couldn't get it to go, but Adams, good offensive rebounding. He's going to shoot two at the line. Yeah, great court vision there. Tyler Matthews was calling for the ball in the near corner on your screen. Hit it. Couldn't hit his shot, actually airballed it, but Adams mentioned that great court vision, able to sweep on through, come in, recover the rebound, put it back up and get fouled on the way. Adams drains the first of two from the line. This is his first trip to the charity stripe, shooting 62.3% coming into this game from the free throw line. Definitely something he'll want to improve on in this latter half of the season as he knocks down two. More coming in for the freshman Matthews. Leopard staying in that press. Looking to get something going. Sage Hens do a good job of breaking it. That's Malarkey running the offense. A nice backdoor cut by Moore and the finish with the right hand on the reverse. I think he's heard me from up here talking about the lack of scoring production. 
Yeah, it looks like he's coming back with a little bit of a, a vengeance. He said, I could score. Almost got the steal. Knutson, the open, almost a three-pointer, but it was a long two, had his right toe on the line. Knutson doing a good job coming off the bench. Malarkey bringing the ball up for the Sage Hens, hands it off to Cookson. A nice court pass to Mora. Good hands by Adams. That could have been a travel call, but Leopards won't get it, and King with the easy lay. Yeah, I think Mora got away with another non-call there. Came off his pivot foot to take another step after already taking two, so unsure about it, but Sage Hens a 14-point lead. Nice kick. Holt won't take the shot. Swings it to the corner, Moore. Another nice corner pass. Holt knocks that three-pointer down, his first of the night. Knew he would get at least one in in this game. A very good shooter for the Leopards. Cuts that lead down to 11. Yeah, chipping away, and the Leopards are going to need to keep moving the ball like that and moving without the basketball at the same time. Doing a better job here in the last few minutes. Cannot agree more, Malarkey. Looking to size up nuts and a nice cross court pass to the corner. Holt playing some good D and a nice contest. Great defense being played by Holt. Rebounded by Stewart who pushes it ahead to Adams. Little drop pass to Holt. He could shoot it a little. That one leaves on the front iron. Rebounded by King and Moore going to slow it down for the Sage Hens. Yeah, Pomona Pitzer left the big man Stewart open. He said, why not? I'll shoot. Oh, nice, nice recovery. Oh, that's a over the back foul. Yep, over the back on King. Jumped completely over Stewart. Looks like we'll be getting a substitution if the. Nope, looks like we're going to go into a timeout. So going into the timeout, 66 55, advantage Sage Hens with just under 10 minutes remaining, 9 53. To be exact, Leopards. You know, still staying in the game, but what are you seeing that they need to do to cut this deficit down? Well, as you mentioned, moving without the basketball, the Leopards still getting the ball into their best scorer's hands. Brian Adams heating up a little bit with eight points. Casey Knudsen with seven. Utilizing the bench and keeping fresh legs on the court. This Sage Hens team is speedy. They've got size, and if you can rotate players into position at the right times, I think you can counterattack the Sage Hens offense and do a little bit more producing of your own. Yeah, what I've liked seeing from the Leopards these past couple minutes is the good ball movement. They've been making the extra pass, haven't been able to get it to go all the time, but you saw Holt with that nice corner three that was all due to the great ball movement by the Leopards. So that's something I would also look forward to, to seeing as well as all the great things that you mentioned. Coming out of the break, Leopards ball. Looking to cut this game to single digits as they did in the first half. Got it as close as five points. Trailed by 15, that was the largest deficit. Moore brings it up for the Leopards. Little high five cross cut by Holt and Harvey. Definitely looking to get Holt going, sending a bunch of screens for him. Nutson with a contested mid-range jumper. Not the shot that you want coming out of the timeout. And you can see not very happy with the result. Mora, nice spin move and the finish. He really likes that spin move. Yeah, a little bit of a mismatch there. Mora able to drive inside the paint, was one-on-one -on -one with Ziegler and just spun right around him, put him through the spin cycle, 68-55. Yeah, Mora's got 15 at, I believe, five in the first half, so 10 points in the second half. So much for being unproductive. Indeed, I think he got upset at us. Little cross-court skip to Holt. Nice little entry pass to Ziegler, who won't be able to get it to go. Rebounded by 14, that's Owen Avdo Avdolovich. Little tongue twister for me there. And that three-pointer good by Joe Cookson, who's got 17 on the night. Yeah, Cookson been fighting for that team lead with Ty Bergman, now retakes it from Brendan Mora. Cookson, 6-4. Nine from the field, having a very good offensive night. Now lead ballooning up to 16, the biggest deficit of the night so far after the Leopards were able to cut it down to 10 not, not too long ago. Harvey 
Nice up fade, gonna relocate for the three-pointer. Won't go off back iron. Rebounded by Cookson, who pushes the action to Mora. A dangerous pass. Still able to get it, and King with the easy lay off the feed from Malarkey. Yeah, and this is the point in time where you really got to bear down and make sure you control those controllables. Pomona Pitzer building on that lead now at 18 points. Can't afford to give away any possessions now. No, this is where you need to start taking advantage of every possession. We're going to have a little reach foul on the entry pass. That'll go against John King. And a timeout. Score is... 73 to 55 in advantage of the Sage Hens with 7.51 remaining in this second half. You're watching Sky Ike men's basketball on LVTV3 Laverne Community Television. And, you know, coming out of that last time out, looks like we were getting a little bit of uh, motion going, but kind of regressing. What have you seen? Yeah, the Leopards still not exactly playing their cleanest basketball. And Pomona Pitts are really just running away with every possession they've got. They've been controlling the basketball for the majority of this game, keeping Laverne on their heels, and they've shot the basketball extremely well, above 50%, 27 of 48 from the field, shooting 40% 40, 40 from beyond the arc, and 17 trips total, 17 shots total, I should say, at the line, something you can't exactly afford to be given up to a team that's at the top of the conference, especially when you're not drawing fouls and have only been to the line a couple times. Definitely great points being made. And you saw on that replay, Leopard's just not quick enough on the loose ball and a nice pass from Malarkey to King for the layup. So coming out of the timeout, Leopard's trailing by 18 with 7.51 to go. 73.55 is the score. Moore's going to take it out from under, looking to get something going for the Leopard's. Ah, and another turnover by the Leopards. These past couple timeouts have not helped them whatsoever, and the easy layup by Cookson, who's got 21 on the night. And Matthews got to be careful trying to swipe so last minute on Cookson going up for the layup. Could have been a costly foul. 20 points is the advantage for Pitzer. Nice entry pass to Ziggler, who finishes kissing that layup off the glass. And that's how you got to do it. Chip away little by little. Do what you've done best so far tonight. Leopard's not shooting the three ball extremely well. Got to figure out a way to get inside. Yeah, you know, a big deficit right now, but seven minutes is plenty of time in basketball. Moore again with that spin move leaves that one off the front iron. Rebounded by Harvard. Who's going to go ahead and push it ahead. Nice strong take to the basket and the finish over the smaller Mora. Yeah, Harvey with the height advantage. Might not be stronger than Mora, but still able to use his physicality to his advantage. Leopards got to keep stringing together stops if they want to make this a close game in the latter half. Pitzer getting it into the post. Shot goes errant. Loose ball. Leopards got to get on the floor quick. And it's going to be a jump ball. Leopards possession. Possession arrow pointing towards them, so they'll get the ball. A couple of good stops by the Leopards these past couple possessions, cutting that lead to 16. If you could get a score here, you feel like the momentum's carrying your way. Yeah, Ty Bergman had put that up and tried to get his own rebound. Good job by the Leopards coming together as a collective to try and retrieve it. They've got a possession here. Could be crucial. And look at the event staff out there cleaning up the wet spot. Got to love it. Got a nice little outfit going on, the jeans, the trucker hat. Moore bringing the ball up for the Leopards. Adams surely looking to attack. And a great take. Looks like he got swiped on the nose, so he'll go up for two shots at the line. That's what you want to see out of the Leopards, being aggressive back down inside. You might be undersized compared to these Sage Hens, but you got to keep trying to draw some contact on the inside. Again, only five shots at the free throw line. They've been a perfect five for five. We'll see how Adams fares here with his two. First free throw from Adams good. It's three for three on the night so far. Defense! 
Adams in his free throw routine spins the ball, a few dribbles. Goes up and both free throws good. Cutting that lead. 2-14. Brad Yasukochi coming in for Safir Moore. Definitely smart move by the coaching staff to get in a defensive anchor like Brad in the game. Sage Hen's doing a good job of breaking that press. Leopard's doing a great job of getting back, however, forcing them into a half-court offense. A nice little jab step, good defense being played by Matthews. Moore has got the ball in his hands. We've seen that a lot this half. And once again, the slip screen. That one hangs off front iron. Really good help defense. You saw a couple Leopards flying into the action. Yeah, good job by Jonas Holt and Yasukochi to tie Bergman up underneath the basket. What a take by Bradley. 12-point game, 75-63 to 63 with 540 remaining in the second half. Leopards looking to make it interesting. Oh, good aggressive defense being played by Brad. We're going to look at the replay of this great finish nice. with the right hand. Nice drive there by Yasukochi, seeing an opening in the lane, going off the glass for the easy bucket. And credit to head coach Richard Reed again, using the substitution at the right time. Yasukochi coming off and making an impact. Yeah, you love to see it from, from the Leopards bench. Really good productivity. Sage Hen swinging the ball around, back into Morris hands. Looking to attack once again, going with that spin move. Great hands by Adams, a great read to know that he's trying to go up for the fadeaway. Picks his pocket clean and he's gonna attack. Great take, won't get the call, he wanted it, so did the crowd and the bench. Leopards won't get that call, still down by 12, with just under five remaining. Malarkey has the ball for the stage hands, getting it back to Mora. Little high pick and roll, once again that slip screen, don't get, get it on the entry that time. Just under 10 on the shot clock, gotta get something going if you're the stage hands. Contested three-pointer won't go. Great rebound by Adams. Leopards have the advantage that they could go quickly. Spin move by Matthews. Couldn't get it to go. Tried to finish with the right hand on the left side. Smart move, but couldn't quite get the finish. Yeah, looked real good, but ran into some trouble underneath the basket. That should be an offensive foul. Uh, but instead, it's going to be a blocking foul and one. Great finish in the paint by Ty Bergman. He's got 16 on the night, looking to make it 17. We're going to look at the replay. Yeah, Brad just not, not getting his feet set in time, running into it. Yeah, you know, looking at the replay, definitely a good call by the officials. Brad kind of slid under a little too late. Free throw is good by Bergman. He's got 17. Bergman's been to the line more than anyone this game. Seven for 10. Really utilizing his size, just going up aggressively, forcing the Leopards into contact. Nutson in the corner, blocked. Bergman. Kicks it out. Holt hucks up the three, won't go. Rebounded by Moore, who's gonna dish it to Cookson. Cookson's got 19, looking to make it 21 on the night. With the layup, won't go. Good defense by Harvey. He's going to push the action for the Leopards. Matthew wants it in the corner. Won't get it. Harvey thought about shooting that three, decided against it. Ah, dangerous pass. Tried to squeeze it in there. Leopards will retain possession. Last off the Sage Hens and another timeout. That one taken by the Sage Hens. 78 to 63 is the score. 15 point advantage with just under four minutes remaining in this second half. Looked like once again the Leopards were coming back, but just another great run by the Sage Hens. What have you, what have you seen from both sides? Yeah, Pomona Pitts are showing why they're the top team in the Sky Act. Whenever they get punched in the mouth, they respond right back with the with a sucker punch of their own. Out of, Yasukochi, out of Yasukochi right there, that's not exactly the look you want trying to force a play being down so much here late in the second half. He had Nutson wide open behind him. They could have reset the offense. 
for a play. Only half the time has dwindled from the shot clock, but the Leopards still doing a good job of hanging in there. They've used the ball movement to their advantage. Yasukochi coming off the bench, providing another spark. It's just a matter of limiting the Sage Hen's shots and keeping the ball out of Mora's hands. He's still been facilitating a lot of the plays for Pomona Pitzer, and he provides a, a big threat. He can either drive, he can shoot the three ball, or he'll get it off the guys like Bergman or Cookson who can produce points of their own. Really great analysis. Yeah, Mora doing it all for the Sage Hens. He's got 10 in the second half, 15 on the night. And if you're the Leopards, you if you could cut this lead to single digits with about two and a half remaining, you'll, you'll be in pretty good business. But you got to start taking action now. Matthews gets the ball off the inbounds. Nice series of behind the back moves. A good trap by the Sage Hens. Forces an air and pass. That would have been off of Brad either way. And it's going to be Sage Hens ball. Yeah, and what I don't like there is that when Matthews gets swallowed up, I didn't see a single leopard move without the basketball. It was Matthews stuck in one spot and the four other leopards on the floor just not moving to help him. You gotta try and at least make an effort. Someone's gotta come relieve him at the top. I cannot agree more. Movement without the ball is very important. That's something we've seen the Sage Hens do a lot in this game. Mora kicks it out to the corner. Cookson, open corner three is good. That will extend the lead to 18 with 3.20 remaining in the second half. Prime example right there. Cooks in moving without the ball into the corner and Mora able to find him with no Leopard to guard. Yeah, Cookson. Leopard's going to have to start getting some three-point shots up. Holt won't shoot. Tries to relocate. Good defense being played by Mora. Kicks it in. Matthews from the corner won't go. Harvey doing a good job on the glass trying to get it, but Mora will corral it in for the Sage Hens and push the action to Cookson. Right back to Mora. Good little give and go action. Rolls out and an offensive rebound. Cookson wide open for three and gets that one to go. And that might be the nail in the coffin this evening. 21 point game with two and a half remaining. Not entirely you know out of reach. They could get a huge run going but it'll take a miracle for the Leopards. Yeah not only will it take Laverne scoring it'll take Pomona Pitzer a lack of production from the Sage Hens. Not sure you can bet on either one of those things based on how this game has gone. Yeah, it's going to be a loose ball foul. Harvey will go to the line. 4-2 in the bonus. Leopards have actually been in the bonus for a good majority of the second half, but the Sage Hens doing a great job of playing defense without fouling. Yeah, they certainly were at that seven foul mark for at least the last five minutes. And as you mentioned, did a great job playing just clean defense. Harvey gets that one to go. 84 to 64 is the score with just a shade under two and a half remaining in this second half of basketball. Second free throw from Harvey. Will touch the bottom of the net. 19 point game. That gives Harvey his 13 and 14 points of the evening. Boyle running across the baseline, which is perfectly legal after a after a shot. Sage Hens will probably look to drain the shot clock these possessions, just looking to go home with the win. Probably won't start going to work until there's 10 on the shot clock. There goes Mora. The spin move. Good defense being played by Mora. Forces a wild shot, but he gets his own rebound and one for Mora. Really tenacious on the glass. Yeah, the guard Brendan Mora has been showing his athleticism all night tonight. Doing a great job there. Spin, 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 spin. Put up the layup. Didn't go. Got his own rebound, though, and then sunk it while drawing contact now at the line for the M1. Mora's got 17 on the evening, looking to make it 18 at the line to complete the three-point play. Free throw is good. That lead up to 22 now for the Sage Hens. Leopards looking to hopefully carry some momentum into the next game at least with a few good last possessions in this game. 
Matthews gets bottled up in the paint, kicks it out to Moore. Moore good from behind the arc on that left wing, gets it to go. Moore has got six points. Both of his baskets coming from behind the arc tonight. 68 to 87, Satans have met the 90 point, point mark just twice this season. Looks like they could be able to do it here. About a minute left. They're going to start getting into that offensive action with five remaining on the shot clock. Ben That's Darden. a travel for sure. Easy call for the refs. Started to mention that's Ben Doherty coming off the bench here in the last 90 seconds. Adams brings the ball up for the Leopards. A strong take to the basket and one by Adams. Great finish through contact with the left hand. And that's the name of Adams' offensive game. You and I were talking about that pregame, that Adams, not exactly the greatest three-point shooter, not afraid to take his three-point shots, but the name of his game is inside the paint, doing a great job using that 6-4 physical frame to get up, score a basket, and draw the contact. Adams misses that free throw. First one he's missed tonight. Yep, he's got 12 on the night, and with under a minute remaining, the score is 87 to 70, Sage Hens. Will walk away with the win. Adams reading that passing lane perfectly. Nice finish with the left hand. Get a couple extra points in the stat book. You're always looking for the silver lining and Adams finding his own here in the last minute or so of this game. Yeah, I mean, just a tough game for the Leopards. They just had spurts of good play and spurts of bad play, and that bad play was really detrimental. That's a Deep two put in by Bergman. He's got 19. Yeah, especially against the top team in the conference. As I mentioned earlier, you got to control the controllables, and the Leopards just didn't play their cleanest basketball in this second half. They did not. Adams could have just dribbled it out, taxed the paint instead, blocked. And, oh, that's going to be a little spicy. Went up for the layup with under 10 seconds remaining. That's one of the unwritten rules of basketball is if you're up by that much, you just kind of dribble it out. But I guess he didn't read that part of the rule book. Darty off the bench looking to probably just get a little bit of action of his own. Yep, and that'll do it. The final from the tents, 89 to 72 Sage Hens. A really dominant performance by the number one team in the sky, and what is it that you saw from both sides that contributed to the way this game played out? Well, Pomona Pitts are doing a great job moving without the basketball. University of Laverne could have done a little bit better at doing that in return, but not exactly at that point in this one. Laverne doing a good job moving the ball, getting extra passes off, but the Sage Hens using their size and speed to their advantage. Got jumped to an early lead ahead of the Leopards in this one and really just piled it on toward the end of the second half. Yep, leading the night for the, for the Sage Hens, 25 for Cookson. Leopards leading scorer was Adams. And a tough loss for the Leopards. We'll look to get back in the win column. I believe that is eight in a row for the Sage Hens and seven losses in a row for the Leopards, and that'll just about do it here tonight. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of the Communications Department at the University of Laverne, I'm Kevon Churchill, Nate Rodriguez. Final here was 89-72 to 72 Sage Hens. And thank you for watching on LVTV3 Laverne Community Television.